Good morning viewers, welcome to Top of the Morning by Mint, your weekday newscast that brings you five major stories from the world of business. Wishing you a very happy Independence Day. It's Wednesday, 15th August 2024. My name is Nelson John, let's get started. Markets remained largely flat on Wednesday. The Sensex was up by 0.2%, while the Nifty 50 edged up by just 0.02%. India is 78 today. Our markets reach record highs regularly, although not without volatility, and our economy is chugging along. This has been made possible due to some path-breaking economic decisions that have been taken along the way. And Madhavan takes a look at some of these decisions that have helped India become the fifth largest economy in the world. Some moments over the years include the Green Revolution, Manmohan Singh's LPG and GST. The recent turmoil in the markets is largely caused by foreign investors pulling their money out of Indian equities. But they have been kept in check by retail investors, who are acting as a counterbalance. Ram Sagal writes that Indian investors have helped prop the Nifty up and perform better than its peers like Japan's Nikkei, South Korea's Kospi and Singapore's Straits Time Index. Despite foreign investors pulling out in large numbers, domestic investors are keeping things going for the Indian public markets. The Nifty has fallen 1.8% during the past 30 days. One of the major factors has been the announcement of Q1 results for FY25. Manjul Paul analyzes nearly 1,500 companies listed on the public bourses, which yielded moderate growth this quarter. Combined revenue increased by 9% annually, while net profits was up by just 5% for the same period. Profits have been trending downwards for a few quarters, economists note. But some closer analysis shows some disparate trends. Munjal finds out that sectors like oil and gas, power, chemicals and agriculture are performing much poorly than their peers. This year's union budget allocated nearly a billion dollars towards the national quantum mission. But what is that? India wants to be a hub for super-fast quantum computers and it also wants to make semiconductor chips. The central government has also been bullish on artificial intelligence and has announced several schemes. These are good, healthy targets. Leslie Dumonte takes stock of India's technological progress and how these ideas will receive policy support over the years to make the plans a reality. Indian mangoes ruled the foreign market for decades. Farmers grew varieties like Alfonso, Langra and Desheri specifically for export as they fetched a better price in the western countries. India produces 40% of the world's total mangoes. However, India is losing its stronghold over everyone's favorite fruit. There's a new exporter in the market. Any guesses? It's China. Narendra Kumar reports that China exported mangoes worth $59 million in 2023 compared to mangoes worth $55 million by India. Funnily enough, mangoes are not native to China. India's first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, had gifted China eight mango saplings back in the 1950s. This diplomatic gift has come back to haunt Indian mango makers decades later. That's all for today. Thank you for joining in. We're eagerly looking forward to our next Top of the Morning episode, which will be packed with fresh business news. Until then, have a great day.